Hey, how's it going everyone? Just back again with another um, video. I'm going to do a commentary on um, End Times Teachers um, pre-tribulation rapture debunked. Um, I don't think I'll cover anything new here, but just, um, you know, just hear what he has to say. I kind of skimmed through it and then um, got a few verses ready to talk about. And um, for me personally, I don't like um, take really anybody else else's teaching seriously at all. Um, I just read the Bible on my own, you know, and then, um, I've come to, um, certain conclusions that I publicize on my channel <clears throat> that, um, are obvious, you know, and then I, I believe obviously if they come true, then it was divinely inspired. And so <clears throat> I don't, it's not like from man or anything like that. So, um, I certainly wouldn't go and look to other quote unquote men for, um, things that God's about to do. You know, I would go to the source and, um, I ask God lots of questions, you know, throughout my life. And um, I hope that what I've received, you know, on the first of this year was, you know, an answer of the way this uh, movie is going to end. And so, you know, I'll be defending that position and then, um, you know, just uh, hear what he has to say. <clears throat> and so generally speaking, end times teacher and the Hebrews are of the position that uh, there's going to be a lot of calamity and chaos and then there's going to be, you know, deliverance of um, God's elect. And uh, I'm not even sure what his position is, if there will be women taken away as well, but um, definitely God's elect. And so um, the one thing that we would agree on, which is biblical and very, very obvious from beginning to end, and I'll bring out verses to support that, is that, um, you know, God's elect, salvation is designed for God's elect, you know. And so <clears throat> there's also a group of people uh, around that, um, in Revelation 18.4 called my people. And then there's other verses that describe women being taken away. And so it's men and women. And the Bible is very, very clear, again, from beginning to end, if you watch my video on salvation, that um, they're in all nations. You know, they're physically, geographically everywhere, you know, across flat earth. And so just know that. <clears throat> they're going to, uh, this group of elect are going to look like people in all nations. And so, you can't find them out by going to one place, you know, or anything like that. Um, if they were in one place, the end times could not happen because they would um, not allow it to get like this, you know. And so they're, the fact that they're spread throughout the earth is very, very important for their power, their ability to um, petition God for various things to be distributed, you know, and weakened and then um, <clears throat> that type of thing. But um, you know, the Bible says that they'll be recombined, you know, through this uh, salvation experience. And then, um, you know, just, that's, that's part of the narrative, you know? And so, um, I obviously don't know, and we're not in a position to ever say that we're in that group, but, uh, generally speaking, I ask to be taken away for sure. I ask to be taken away uh, many, many times a day. And so, um, uh, it's not up to me, you know, for sure. <clears throat> the Bible being true to me is very likely, highly, highly likely at, at this point, and then, um, you know, the end times is governed only by the Most High. So we can, we don't even technically know, even though it's very, very clear with the signs that we're in the last days, but it's only up to the Most High. And so he could just, I'm not saying he's going to do this because then he would be a liar, but he could just be like, no, I'm <laughs> just, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, I'll just kind of let them do whatever they want and forget about the Bible and all that kind of stuff. So again, we have no reason to believe that God would do that. I'm just saying that that's a possibility, you know, because it's not up to us, it's up to the most high. And so, <clears throat> again, we would absolutely not expect that because then the God of the Bible would be a liar, you know. And so um, there are many things going on in the world right now that if they go on for much longer, we could accuse God of being a liar. And so that is why I know and rightfully accuse him of being a liar. That's why I know that we're in the last days, you know, because the entire earth is required to sin. And then... Um, you know, there's poor, poor people everywhere, you know, and then God hates sin and he loves the poor. And so, um, and me and I'm assuming a lot of others, again, spread out through, uh, this flat earth know that the Bible teaches that this physical place is hell. And so, um, you know, just, just know that. And so, um, you know, these are things that people did not know, um, in the past, <clears throat> um, end times, quote unquote people. So people always say, well, you know, people have been talking about the end times for a long time. Yeah, but um, they haven't known the things that we know now that are obvious. 
um, for example, like the flat station Earth is very, very important. Um, Mystery Babylon being revealed and being very, very obvious and this being hell. And then obviously the mark of the beast technology being ready, you know, <laughs> locked and loaded. Uh, and so there's many, many things that point to this time as being very, very unique. It's not an arrogant thing or anything like that. We didn't choose these truths, so to, think, so to speak. The, the truth has found us, you know, and the Bible says the most high does this. <clears throat> the most high opens people's minds and allows people to accept the truth. You know, truths on the lower level and then the ultimate truth, which is Christ or Yahweh, certain people call him, end times teacher calls him. It, it's a spirit. And so, uh, the, you know, Christ even says his disciples, they didn't choose him, he chose them, you know, to go and produce fruit that will last. And so, um, this is not a boastful thing in any way, but if these things come true that I teach on my channel or anybody teaches whatever, then God provided those, you know, it just has to be, you know, it didn't just, <laughs> it didn't just sprinkle and see where it lands kind of thing. Like, um, so, you know, this is why, you know, I'll respond to him in an academic way. You know, we, we, I, you know, definitely call him out for being a Satanist because if he's wrong, he is a Satanist. Just like if I'm wrong, I'm a Satanist. I am on God's left hand side, which is used for deception, you know? And so, um, partial truths or, a deceiving spirit or whatever you want to call it. I'm not actively deceiving, but <clears throat> what I would have taught if it doesn't come true is deceptive because it's not true. And so anything that's not true is false, right? And then anything that is not true is against Christ. You know, if you're not for Christ, you're against him. <clears throat> and so that's why these things are very, very important um, to quote, land on the right side, you know? And so um, literally, and, um, you know, that's why it's important, you know, especially in the days that we live in now, these things shouldn't be confusing, you know, and um, that's why, again, I know the Bible is true. And I know end times teacher, for example, is an actor, and he sometimes admits it, because the things that he's teaching are just obvious, like an easy, <laughs> very easy to, de to debunk. Um, it's just very simple. And so it's not really like, oh, you got to go to this verse and go into the blue letter and you know, really get deep and, you know, be like, oh, okay, you know, it's not, it's none of that. Like the stuff that he's um, saying is just like, uh, it's, I would say a lot of the Hebrew stuff. I mean, the flat station earth debunks other Hebrews, not him because he's a flat earther, but um, so you don't have to go to this level of detail. But um, I mean, this is, this is very easy <laughs> to, to um, understand um, how this quote unquote rapture is is going to where it's going to be you know in uh in the end times you know and uh, what the significance is and where it's found in the bible and that kind of thing and so just know that like <clears throat> rapture salvation and all these things are the same you know and um i'll, I'll bring that out you know in, in certain verses so um just know that and but i want to know for people like from a high level the reason i know that um that i can call him an actor comfortably and know that he's a satanist or antichrist is that I've been in the 501c3 Christian church. We've gotten out, you know, through Flat Earth and other things in the last few years. And we still remember the tricks, quote unquote tricks that they use to lure people in, you know, like, oh, just say the sinner's prayer and then, you know, Christ will save you. And, you know, it's not a workspace thing and all that. And then we start reading the Bible we're like, oh, <laughs> shoot. Um, we're getting quite a bit different message when we read the Bible ourselves that um, Christ, in fact, wants us to do a lot of things, you know, and the most important thing is we have to forgive others or we are, we cannot be forgiven. It, it's absolute. And so that's one of many, many things. And then the book of James tells us that how can we say that we have faith when we don't even care for other people? And there's a bunch of different things, you know, and so, and then Revelation 18 forces come out of my people, don't be partakers of our sins, which is an action or an inaction, however you think about it. And so there's lots of things that God tells us to do. And then if we do that, for example, don't be partakers of our sins, then we may not be part of those plagues in 18.8. And we'll talk about that here. And so um, there's a lot of quote unquote cause and effect action reaction with the God of the Bible. And so um, that's the same, the tricks that were used now, we have the modern day version of it and they've up, uh, they have a bit more truth. You know, they know more things. They know that America's mystery of Babylon. They know that Christ is dark skin and all that kind of stuff. And so, and they, they read other parts of the Bible, you know, and then teach it. And so that's, uh, but, it's the same thing is that it's all about their salvation. You know, it's like, like the Christian church was saying personal salvation. It's my relationship with Jesus and all that. And now that's like the Hebrews are like, you have to be in the truth, you know, and then go and sort of kiss the ring and get salvation from them. And, but they don't care about people. We know that. And so, uh, cause if they did care about people, they would push all the truth, you know, and I've heard 
end times teacher in Obadiah and all these people, lots of Hebrew Israelite, quote unquote Hebrew Israelites say, oh, what difference does the shape of the earth make? And then I want people to know when I went through Acts recently, Acts 5, there's an, an encounter of Ananias and Sapphira who were killed just because they, they told a lie about how much they how much money they received for a particular offering and then um, for this price of land. And God showed in front of them, this, he just killed them both. And so who knows how much they were lying by? Let's say it was even just a small percent. And so God said, that's how much he hates lies. And then all the disciples, they hate it as well. And so what kind of person, <laughs> this is almost funny, it's like stupid that we even have to talk about this, would then think that they're one of the elect and even more a blasphemous is they think they're the two witnesses. They think they're the two witnesses, the elect and the remnant. And I want people to know those are three very distinct groups in the Bible. Um, the, the two witnesses are Moses and Elijah from beginning to end. The elect are the elect, and we'll talk about this here, 144,000. And then the remnant are in a group in the Middle East, you know? And so they, they just jumble all these things together and they think they're every righteous group in the Bible, which is absolutely stupid. And so would any of those groups of people say, it doesn't matter what the shape of the earth is, which is just saying, uh, what they're saying is it doesn't matter what truth is. And then, so it's like, well, what does, what does it matter what Christ or Yahweh is then? Cause he's the truth. And so um, just know that. So if you read Acts five, um, first of all, you'll see that the truth matters on small things, money, little bit of money being withheld to <laughs> the shape of the earth. How can you teach another person their spiritual surroundings when you don't even want to tell them their physical surroundings? So this is why I know that they're actors. And this is why I know the Bible is special because they're actors everywhere. Ken Hoven, Pastor Anderson, all these people, it's, we're okay to, God is not offended if we call them actors because they're acting. God doesn't want us to act. He wants us to act if we do act like anything, act like Christ. He told the truth. He loved the truth. He is the truth. <clears throat> and so he's not gonna say what, what difference does it make, you know what I mean? Like he's behind the deception if for people can accept it. So of course he wants us to uncover that. And then he's telling us that the earth is flat and stationary and um, you know, that he was born of the Holy Spirit and Mary. And so, and lots of other things. And so these things do matter. And so I just want people to know that that's why I can confidently call him an actor and he knows he's an actor, you know? And so, because again, and I'll show in this video that his understanding of the Bible is just, it's obviously bad, you know? And it's the same thing with Ken Hovind when he goes into other things in detail, but then he just glosses over all the flat earth verses and same with Pastor Anderson and Tahar and all these people. That's not normal, you know, because they'll go in depth about the history, you know, in the transatlantic slave trade, Deuteronomy, they'll all go deep into that. But like, why would they ignore like hundreds of other verses that talk about the shape of the earth? Like, why? That, does, that doesn't make sense. And Zabak and all that kind of stuff. So the only way that it makes sense, and I've been told that they're just actors. And so their job is to push certain truths. And so it's for us, you know, again, if these things manifest to receive them, you know, and so they're what I call market makers, actors, whatever you want to call it. Um, limited scriptures is a term that I use. And so that's what he is, you know? And so he would say, I would say, give him a bit more credit because he, he sort of admits to it when I tell him that, but um, some people don't know, you know, they genuinely don't know that they're being used to, uh, as part of God's left-hand side. And I just, for the few people that come by here, just don't be stupid, <laughs> you know? Like just, first of all, don't fall for that. And then just like call them an actor, that's what they are. And then you could find out a person's an actor quickly. Um, there's just certain things of the Bible. If, if a person is not able to talk about the Bible at all, then they're definitely an actor and slated for destruction. And then if there's certain things in the Bible that uh, they're not allowed to talk about or just say, what, what difference does that make? And then it could be the shape of the earth. It could be Christ's skin color or mystery Babylon. What difference does it make? Uh, yada, yada, yada. A lot. If it didn't make a difference, why is it in the Bible? <laughs> and so um, it makes a big difference, you know, for us that we understand that that's God's word and we cling to it um desperately you know in the times that we live in and we should throw all times but now more than ever so it matters every word matters every number matters every placement of all the words matter and then i'm going to go into that in these numerology videos so it all matters and so they're part of the net upgraded business of salvation but now it's through them and they don't care about other people because <laughs> they'll say routinely and just with a straight face, like it doesn't even matter what difference does it make, you know, to salvation. So they'll care about their own salvation than the knowledge of, you know, that or the knowledge in people's minds of their people. And the Bible says in the end, in the end days in particular, um, let me get this verse. And this is uh, something I want people to know. And uh, this is very, very important. 
verse, and again, it's not um, numbered this way uh, by accident. Isaiah 33, 6, And wisdom and knowledge shall be the st stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. And so wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability. The reason I am stable, and it, I don't think it'll change, and I'm not trying to boast, because I know that I'm in a movie, and I know God is a director. I know I live on a flat stationary earth, and I know that God is in control of the left and right-hand side. I know that. I just don't know where I fit in this, you know, and I don't have any choice in that. You know, I didn't ask to be born and, like, you know, make me this height and teach me these truths and all this kind of stuff. This is all God's doing. And so um, that's why I have stability, and I look for salvation, like this verse says. And so that's why we know they're actors, because they'll put the wisdom and knowledge of their quote-unquote people that they claim to love and all that kind of stuff, which they don't. They hate God's people because they hate truth. And so they'll put their own salvation ahead of those. So one person, they'll put one person ahead of all these other people, and that's Antichrist because it's the opposite of what Christ did. He put all the other people ahead of himself, you know, and like, you know, all the pain that he felt and all that kind of stuff. He did the very opposite. So these people are Antichrist because with all wisdom and knowledge is important. And it, the Bible says here in Isaiah 33, 6, is that a coincidence that's in 33? Um, no, it's not. <clears throat> um, not at all. And so we are undoing the deceptions that are out there in the world. And then the 33 is the number that we see out, that God is putting that out there. And so that's why we have stability in these times, because we know that God is behind the deception and in these deceivers as well. And um, we want as many people to have this wisdom and knowledge so they can be stable, you know, through these times. And then the strength of salvation and the fear of the Lord is his treasure. And so these people don't fear God. You know, they can, they'll say that with not even blinking. They don't care. These people are the most dangerous people on this earth right now. And the people that I personally need to be saved from because they know a bit about the Bible. And end times teacher and Obadiah and other, these people, Tahar, they know more about the Bible than a majority of people on this earth. <clears throat> more than Ken Hovind and Pastor Anderson. So they're the most dangerous. And then they're the most selfish, you know, and so that's a scary combination. And so just know that those are the people that are out there, you know, floating around kind of thing. And so, um, you know, they hate God. And so I say that confidently and I know that um, because they'll talk about that and then obviously blasphemy the Holy Spirit, teaching the non-virgin birth is like even worse. And so they have to tell us in certain ways that they're on God's left-hand side. And he makes it very obvious to me. So you know, just hear what he has to say. This again, just to sort of kill time and I'll maybe be able to bring out some other verses that I haven't yet. But um, just know that God's people and um, we're told who they are here in Acts 5. <clears throat> um, and by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people and they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. They were all in one accord. And so I'm looking through my channel for people who are receiving the same kind of instruction that I have. And I've noticed there isn't anybody and that's fine because it doesn't, I don't care because the things that I believe and teach are obvious. And so if the Bible is true, what I teach to me is obvious. And so um, those people, wherever they are, I've realized now that if, if what I teach is correct, a lot of them will be just, they're off the grid. They're just poor, blind, lame. And I don't say this to disrespect them, but they're like not on YouTube for sure. And so they're just peppered throughout the earth. And so that group, I want to be one with them, you know, wherever they are. And then we would all then be in one accord with, you know, Christ or the Christ that I present um, on this channel. And so um, they're not going to have all these different doctrines and <laughs> like end time teachers, a flat earther, and then Obadiah is a ball earther and all these people are all over the place. Um, Sakari thinks, doesn't think that lying is a sin and all that. Basically everything, these people are supposed to be really into the law, right? And then, but for some reason, they don't care about any aspect of it. <laughs> you know, Sakari says lying's okay. Tahar is cool with prostitutes. End time teacher says shape of the earth doesn't matter. You know, and all this kind of stuff. And then, um, you know, Job 924 is not referring to like the mass and coronavirus and stuff. So uh, they don't care, you know? And it's like, there's atheists who are more outraged at, um, you know, God's laws being violated than these quote unquote Hebrew Israelites. And so they're actors, you know, on many levels, they, they fail. <laughs> and so just know that. And, um, and in verse 14 here, and believers were the more added to the, to the Lord multitudes, both men and women. And so that's the same multitude, you know, and, um, their souls are recycled. And so, and then they've been put into all nations. And so, uh, just know that. And so, um, 
it's the same group. You know, the inner circle, Peter and all that represent the 144 and then this multitude are everywhere. And then some of them will have to go through the hour of temptation and um, refuse the mark of the beast. But the people closest to Christ or Yahushai, they hate lies. They hate small lies and definitely big lies. And they just want those people killed. And so just know that they're not going to say like what difference is it make? <laughs> what difference does this make and that make and all this kind of stuff it makes a lot of difference. Um, you know, it's the, it's the Bible and um, you know, all that kind of stuff. So let me play this and um, I'll just pause it and stuff. I'll also put, um, sorry, it's just taking a second to load. I'll also put the link below to um, Rob Skiba. I'll also put the link below to um, Rob Skiba, 2013, prophesying the, the vaccines leading to the mark of the beast. So I have a question for end times teacher and all these people. You'd look at Rob Skiba and probably be like, he's an Edomite because he teaches all this other stuff that's not true. And so, but why is Rob Skiba <laughs> running circles around you, uh, you people? And how come you don't have any idea about the sequence of the end times, which I'll point out here. And it's very, very obvious. Again, these are obvious truths. I'm not on my high horse or anything like that. This stuff is simple. For people who actually read the Bible and care about people, God will tell you things. You know, why wouldn't he? It's like, we're talking like one of the order of days <laughs> that things are going to happen. It's not funny, but like, it's not a big mystery. You know, it's not that hard. And so I'm going to bring out a few verses that will debunk this whole video. <laughs> and so it's not that big of a deal. And so my question for him and Obadiah and Tahar and all these other actors, how come Rob Skiba, the quote-unquote Edomite, um, how come he got you guys? <laughs> I'm telling you, like, I'll put the link below. He's going into detail. I mean, it's not like a vague thing, you know, like sometimes we hear a little bit in the music and all that, you know, about uh, coronavirus and stuff. I mean, it's like specific. <laughs> and it's like 2013. And so there was not a whiff of this stuff in 2013. And so no one knew that this was coming, you know, um, except a again, a little things and songs here and there. But I mean, Rob Skiba, like running circles around these quote unquote prophets. And so what's up with that? All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I'm gonna start off by giving all praises unto Yahweh Basham, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh, who the world calls God, and Yahweh Shai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Um, the name of this video is going to be something along the lines of just FYI for people on the bottom of this video. I asked him because I know he's a limited scripture. He's not allowed to talk about certain things. I'm like, do a video breaking down Job 924. And he's like, if I, I will, if I remember. <laughs> and so, um, you know, I'm like, what does it mean in Job 924 when he says the cut when he says he covers the faces of the judges slash leadership. So Job 924, uh, let me read it. Nine plus 24 is 33. This will come up when I go through Job um, with my numerology stuff, but that's not a coincidence. <laughs> Just know that it's not. I mean, I'm telling you, I don't know how many examples I have to give for people to know that these numbers are not there by accident at all. And um, God wants us to find these. They're treasures. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. He covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? It's like rhetorical. It's like obvious. And so a lot of powerful things here. The earth is given to the hand of the wicked, the entire earth. So we got to look for some worldwide thing. He's going to cover the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is like, it's obvious. <laughs> so it's like, how much more obvious could it be? And so these Bible non-literalists, which is this person ultimately is, this this verse, I mean, is just literally like <laughs> handed to you on a platter um, if you're a quote unquote prophet. And so he'll stick to his other, whatever his non-literal stupid um interpretation of this but it's god's like just saying i mean don't listen to these people like they're the ones who are actually going to go and wear a mask and he does that once in a while and so he's letting us know that he's just an actor and so um this verse could not be more literal and more obvious and so um judges in that in that day is just referring to people who like literally make judgments like you know rule on different things and so in the modern day what's that you know it's like um <clears throat> there are people who there are laws in place and then they go and you know, make judgments based on them or like go and enact them in a court setting. And so that's our leadership, you know? And so if the leadership's going to do it, they're going to try and get as many people to follow them as they can. And so just know that. And that's what's happening right now. And then it's, to me, it's only going to intensify and um, cause they're wicked people. And so, I mean, how much, <laughs> how much more obvious and literal is that verse than right now? And then the nine plus 24 is a little bit of, um, you know, cherry on top that it refers to now. 
you know, and I mean, how can you mess that up? <laughs> so if he can't break that down, like how are we going to trust his other stuff? So let's hear what he's got to say, just for fun. Refuting the pre-tribulation rapture. Now I know there's somebody out there who calls it the pre-plague rapture. Yeah, just so people know, my position, which is what the Bible um, says in Revelation 18, 4, come out of her, my people, don't be partakers of her sins and you won't receive of those plagues. And then it lists the plagues in 18, 8. And so it says that in 18.4, again, for people in 22, that's a code for flat earth. Just know that. And so when it says my people, that's what it means. It's not talking about ball earthers and Ken Hoven and all these other actors. Um, just know that. And so it's not coincidence. None of these things are coincidence, you know, and so just know that. It's certainly not a coincidence to me. And so, um, and then in Revelation 18.8, it actually lists those plagues. Death, mourning, and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. And so, um, if there's a group, my people, that the, you know, the Bible is saying, come out of her, my people, don't be partakers of sins, and then you won't receive of those plagues. You won't receive death, mourning, famine, or be a part of America being burned. And so um, that's salvation, because you will not receive death as, as a plague. And so that's why I call it a pre-plague rapture. Before those plagues hit in America, which is what Revelation 18 is talking about, a group has to be taken away or else Revelation 18 is not going to come true. And then to me, the whole Bible is not true because God's a liar, but God is not a liar. This person's a liar. And so um, just know that. And so that's where I get that term pre-plague rapture. And again, just by coincidence, it's consistent with everything else. You know, it's like, um, you know, with uh, Revelation 3, for example, talking about the church in Philadelphia being delivered prior to the hour of temptation. And so just know that, I mean, it's, uh, there's like many, many examples that, um, that, uh, I can tell you, uh, that I use to support that doctrine, you know? And so, um, you know, just know that. And so I'll just get this verse quickly. They don't know this because they're not part of that church. Just know that. And so they're not allowed to teach revelation three, seven, um, you know, because that's to, that's to the angel, the church in Philadelphia, which is the church of God's elect. And so they are part of it in the sense that in verse 3, 9, Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. These people are liars. I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. Um, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon the, on the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. That's the great tribulation. And then I'm also going to get other verses to, to support that. I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation. And that hour of temptation is 1260 days of God's wrath being laid out on this earth. And I'll show that as well in um, 1 Timothy and um, Revelation 15 and 16. And so just know that. And so there's many examples. It's not just like there's lots. And so that God's children will not experience wrath. His elect will not. And so then there's another group called the mixed multitude, which um, will uh, be martyrs. Um, but this isn't necessarily directed towards him. So the vast majority of the people out there call it a pre-tribulation rapture. So if he's watching this video, which you know who you are, the mind of God, if you're watching this, this isn't directed towards you. We're in tribulation now. You could call what I teach a post-tribulation rapture. And when the, rap when the rapture occurs, that's tribulations over. Next, it's great tribulation. And so it's a post-tribulation pre-plague rapture. And, um, but he didn't, won't even acknowledge that we're in tribulation now because he doesn't care. He's happy eating his Doritos or whatever. Like he's just, he's just, he's a Satanist. You, uh, just to make that clear. Um, cause I know he's gonna, you know, he'll be so far up with my nuts. I should call him bond, gold bond. Are those the kind of jokes that the, the two witnesses will make or the elect or the remnant? Are you kidding me? Are we this starved for righteousness on this earth that People like this, who again, like I said, knows more than the, more about the Bible than a majority of people on this earth. So I'll give them credit for that. Are these the people that we're supposed to be led by and take seriously? This is why we're in the end times, because the Bible is being destroyed by stupid people and evil people like him. About that, um, about saying pre-plague rapture, because I said pre-tribulation rapture, all right? And then you, you guys should know what I'm talking about, kind of like an inside joke. But anyway, um, how was one way we can refute this teaching? Well, you know, for one, going by a Christian's belief, um, when you deal with uh, 
with Babylon, right? Um, that it says that she was drunk with the blood of the saints. You know, these Seventh Day Adventists say that's the Vatican, but we know that's not true. Um, but the thing is that America's mystery Babylon. It has to be. There's no debating anymore. If people think it's something else, just ignore them because that's just stupid. That's like somebody saying the Earth is a spinning ball. It's exactly the same. How can we prove that America's Babylon? As we're doing this, because that takes place um, during the tribulation, the persecution of the elect, okay, of, of the uh, of the Lord's chosen, that takes place during the tribulation. So, when America's destroyed, which happens um, in during the tribulation, that's where he doesn't understand the sequence. He's gonna everything he says is completely false. Um, America is destroy, destroyed at the end of the Great Tribulation. And so again, I want people to know this person thinks he's one of the two witnesses. And so he's just, I mean, that's, I mean, I don't even know what to say. Um, that's stupid. And just the fact that people are stupid enough to like do that means that we have to be at the end. Cause like, I mean, what's gonna happen later? There's gonna be even like dumber people, <laughs> like you know, years from now gonna say that. So no, it's stupid. And then I've heard from the rapture puzzle, that person sometimes I've, I've heard her say like, the left behind people are like the 144 or something like that, which is like absolutely stupid when the whole salvation rapture experience is for the elect. And so that's crazy. And so um, this person thinks he's the two witnesses. So, um, you know, he doesn't understand that um, the two witnesses need to be brought here, you know? And so um, he doesn't understand Acts 111, you know? And then he, like he has the audacity to put himself and this group of people who believe in all these stupid things and don't care about the law at all. There's atheists who care about the law more than these quote unquote, some of these quote unquote Hebrew Israelites. And so he'll put himself into Revelation 11 when everything about Revelation 11 is describing two very, very pure entities, you know, and pure um, souls. And um, it's Moses and Elijah. And so then the whole thing just gets, the whole sequence is just gone. They don't have any idea how to get an understanding of Revelation in terms of like the sequence, you know, and so... Um, no, America's not destroyed in tribulation. It's great tribulation. It's it, during wrath. Like I read in Revelation 18, 8, death, mourning, and famine, she shall be utterly burned with fire. There's a group that don't experience any of that, according to Revelation 18, 4. And so he doesn't know that. And so he doesn't understand that that taking away of that group that do not experience death, mourning, famine, or America being burned is when the two witnesses are brought here. And so... Uh, they're taken away out of tribulation and then begins great tribulation where those two witnesses are tormenting the entire earth with um, plagues in Revelation 16. 1 Thessalonians 5, 9, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. So not experiencing wrath is salvation. It's one-to-one -one according to that verse and everything that I'm saying right now, Revelation 18, 4 and 18, 8. And so um, then we get an understanding of, well, what's wrath? And so if you go to Revelation 15, um, Revelation 15, 7, And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of God, who liveth forever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power, and no man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. And that's Revelation 16, which is the next chapter. And so those plagues are the wrath of God. And so, big shocker, <laughs> Revelation 15, 16 is consistent with 18, is consistent with 1 Thessalonians, is consistent with everything in the Bible. And so, it's consistent with Acts 111, is um, consistent with everything. And so, is that, that's a big shocker, right? I guess for these quote-unquote Bible scholars, it's a big deal. This is real, T-Mog's on some deep stuff here. Um, no, it's just very, very clear. And so... Uh, the fact that he's not able to see this means that he's an actor. You know, it has to be. That's it's we're at that point in the game where it's obvious. And so we're told right here what the wrath of God is. It's the plagues in Revelation 16. And then we're told in First Thessalonians that there's a group that will not experience that. And then we're told in Revelation 3 as well that there's a group who's not going to experience that because that's the hour of temptation. And then guess what? One of those first plagues is linked to the mark of the beast. And so... Um, you know, that's why he doesn't know the Bible, you know, and he, he, this is what happens when anybody, including myself, even I'm not stupid enough to do this. Definitely not. Now you insert yourself into the two most righteous seats, um, in all of heavens, <laughs> this guy, <laughs> this dummy and Obadiah and all these other morons to uh, and all these clowns of all the places to put yourself in the Bible. They put themselves two <laughs> in the two seats next to Christ or Yahushua 
And then they, they're just the most disgusting people you could ever imagine, you know? And so, and like dumb, like literally just not intelligent people. Oh, what difference does it make with the shape of the earth is and all this kind of stuff. This is why we're in the end times because the people with the Bible in hand are disgusting people and they're stupid. They're just flat out dumb. Like they're not smart. This is not that deep. I mean, this is, it's not, you know, just from what people have just, even if you came by my channel for the first time, you'll know what I just said here is not that deep. And then like, I found it here. In Revelation um, 15, 16, I found it in Revelation 18, I found it in Revelation 3. I mean, like, I mean, I could keep going and if you just look at my videos to find other examples of that. And I mean, like, it's not that hard. And so there's a group of called my people, men and women that are taken away. And then God's wrath begins, you know, and then he's tormenting the whole earth. Like it says here um, with plagues, you know, and so just know that. And so, um, you know, if you read um, Revelation 3, like I just said, like I just read, sorry. Um, uh, Revelation 3.10, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation. Keep means to avoid, you know, so you don't have to go through that. Um, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So then it's going to be everybody. And so just by coincidence, guess what? Revelation 11 talks about two witnesses who have power over the whole earth. And then we're told, given clues about the plagues that they've done in the past and that they're going to have power to do. And it's the same plagues, <laughs> you know, that are described in Revelation 18, 8, and then described here in um, um, Revelation 15 and 16. And so big shocker, right? And so there's going to be a time where God is going to torment the entire earth with plagues and that's called the hour of temptation and then it's the mark of the beast that's the goal of that time period is to um get the mark of the beast out worldwide and so he has to create a frenzy you know and then people are going to choose the government or god and so choose wisely right near the end uh that's when the elect receives their salvation hence uh revelation uh 18 and 4. Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins. So we clearly see that that's not a pre tribute What are those sins? This guy will not talk about anything that's going on this earth being a sin. It's a sin to lie, according to the Bible. It's a sin to cover your face because it's done by the wicked people. Um, it's a sin to, um, you know, uh, get paid with your own money, you know, and then charge interest. And it's a sin to eat disgusting foods, you know, that... Um, who knows what's in them and the list goes on i mean all the laws of god are perfect and anything against those are sin so everybody is required to sin and so how come these quote-unquote law receivers don't talk about anything about sins they don't they don't care <laughs> they don't care at all and so they're again atheists that will be more upset about these rules than end times teacher and obadiah and tahar they don't care they're just acquiescers and the god's elect are not acquiescers they're the opposite if you were to meet the most stubborn people ever about what god wants it's them and so if i'm this annoyed how annoyed do you think they are right now like what do you think they're saying to god and so um let me get a good verse that will explain how much these people hate it here and so um just so people don't think it's only me <laughs> I will hold my tongue, this is 2nd Ezra 15, 8, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continuously. There's a group of people on this earth, the Bible says 144,000 men that are constantly complaining, 24-7. And so God is saying here in 2nd Ezra that there will be a time when he'll respond to them you know and then it's, it's he'll he'll do what he's going to do and uh, which is send his son son back with his angels and um, the two witnesses and so 15 8 23 2 3 this is 33 we're living in those times you know just uh, know that and so he's speaking second ezra's right here and ezra's is somewhere on this earth right now he's talking about the elect and so like it says here the souls of the just can complain continually like 24 7 and so if you find my channel annoying a group of people out there that are complaining 24-7, and God listens to them. Relation <clears throat> rapture. And he's not one of them, because this guy's eating Doritos with Tahar and Rakar, who's a mason, on his couch, 
they don't care. <laughs> like they're eating Doritos, which is like an abominable food, according to them, which they don't care about the law. And just hopefully it's obvious, but um, just know that. So it's not them. Because they're getting their salvation just before Babylon, which is America, is destroyed, which takes place at the end of the tribulation. How bad is that? Like, it, this is like, you can literally debunk this in like two seconds, two verses. Revelation 18, 4, come out over my people, don't be partakers of our sins, and you won't receive the plagues. Go, go, go down a little bit. You go to read the plagues, death, mourning, and famine, then she, she, she shall be utterly burned with fire. So before the burning of the fire, there has to be death, mourning, and famine. So there's a group that avoid all of those things. <laughs> so I don't know how much more obvious it could be. And so he's bringing out 18.4 because he knows that I have said many times that they're not allowed to teach that. So he's just butchering it. And so that's the problem when you have people who are liars, like they have no choice but to say something stupid. And so those two verses are like, it's obvious. There's no confusing that. Like, it's just, you can't say that the, the elect are taken away during any kind of chaos because that specifically says they will not receive those plagues. And it lists the plagues in sequential order. Like, how much more like obvious can it be? And so, I mean, what else can that be if that the Bible's true and he's an actor? Like for me, like what, for people to understand, what else am I supposed to conclude? And so that's just, that's it. So that's all I, that's all I get whenever, I mean, I don't really care um, what end times teacher teaches now at this point, but there's too many examples of that everywhere, not just with him. After post Mark of the Beast, which is the microchip, by the way, that verse has nothing to do, it <laughs> doesn't even talk about the mark of the beast. So, um, but what I teach, like I said, and all those other verses are consistent with that. There's a group that are not going to be part of that hour of temptation and any of that. None of the plagues, like I read, no wrath or nothing, none of that, like I read in uh, First Thessalonians. And so he's not a part of that group. That's why he doesn't know that. And so I don't know why somebody would teach something and want to be part of chaos. You know, that doesn't make sense. Like stupid, it's like somebody just beats themselves on their head and they enjoy it or something like that. No, a group of us, me, we don't want to be here because we know that this is hell. And so whether I'm one of those souls who are crying continually, I'm complaining a lot. Let's just say that. And so, um, no, we're not going through like any like death, mourning and famine, really burn with fire. You want to be a part of that? Are you kidding me? Just so people know, death, mourning and famine, those are the plagues for America. And then those are going to be happening as a result of the two witnesses administering the plagues in 16. And then during that time, like I said, the first plague refers to the mark of the beast. So it's going to be pushed out early. And then it's going to be largely successful because of this quote unquote alien invasion. Just know that that's the major deception worldwide where people are going to get spooked. If they're on the fence about the government narrative, they're going to go to the government. And then there's another group who will not, and they will give up their life. And that's the mixed multitude. <clears throat> no man can number. Okay. Um, another thing as well, when you're dealing with the mark of the beast, these guys say that, um, you know, they'll only receive their salvation um, before the mark of the beast. At least that's what the mind of God says. Uh, but the one thing that's what the Bible says. But then is when you read in the scriptures, which speaks about um, the elect, they said. They got victory over the beast. They neither worshiped his image nor did they receive his mark. So how could the elect um, escape before the tribulation if in that scripture they had to go through the tribulation because they did not take the mark of the beast? But if the mark of the beast wasn't out because according to these guys, the elect would receive their salvation before the mark of the beast is, uh, is in, uh, in, what's the word I'm looking for? Is, is world bible say okay i mean that's sad so they they think <laughs> this is like i mean this is so easy this is stupid again it's just to kill time these this clown and others think that they're the two witnesses they also think that they're the 144,000. they think they're the remnant which are in the middle east that um, care more about the law than their life and then now he thinks that he's a group called the mixed multitude <laughs> and so let me get the verse that this clown is talking about um which just in itself debunks it. So he's, his argument is that there's a verse in Revelation 20 where, you know, people are avoiding the mark of the beast and then, you know, in, um, you know, in a righteous place, you know, in the spirit realm. And so like that has to be the elect. 
but you, if you read the, the verse, you'll know just by what it says, they can't be the elect. Revelation 20, verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So how can that group of people be the elect when the elect are not, quote-unquote, beheaded? <laughs> They're taken away. They're not, they don't die. They don't receive death, mourning, or famine or being a part of America being burned with fire. Because anybody who's burned with fire, their body and soul are destroyed. So they're on God's left-hand side. And so, of course, you know, God's right-hand side is not a part of that. So he thinks Revelation 20, verse 4 is referring to God's elect, but it explicitly says here that they were beheaded for the witness of Jesus. So um, how are you saved when you're beheaded? <laughs> and so this is the mixed multitude. There's two groups of people in the end times. Three groups of people in the sense that there will be people who are not in this realm you know, or, in, the, or in, a, in a body, but in this realm. And then um, those are like the dead in Christ. And so then there's a group that um, are the mixed multitude that no man can number. They're just, they're given white robes and they're just um, in all nations again. And then there's the elect. And so, um, you know, let me get that first. And just know that's the same multitude um, that is um, what I read in, uh, in Acts. This is Revelation 7, verse 9. Um, and I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count. Um, I'm reading NIV. From every nation, tribe, and people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, they were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And so um, Revelation 7, 9 is referring to the mixed multitude. So the elect you can count. So that's not the elect in that group. That's, a, that's the mixed multitude that go through um the great tribulation you know and just know that and so um again he's he's debunking himself this is a problem when you cherry pick verses and you have no idea what the sequence is you just you have to like say stupid things so it's kind of the same with the ball earthers like when you're pushing a lie eventually you have to say something stupid you know or just a lie and so um he thinks <laughs> the he thinks the elect are the two witnesses the hundred and forty four thousand, the remnant and now he thinks they're the mixed multitude who are beheaded and so the elect are not beheaded. And so, no, that's not salvation. What are you being saved from if you're beheaded? That's stupid. And so, no, those are people that are in the hour of temptation. And so that's not the group of the elect who are the Church of Philadelphia. Just know that. Okay. So that kind of seems like a, con like a uh, contradiction. No, it's not. You're just stupid. If you, uh, if you see what I'm saying. No, we don't. So again, we'll say it again. How could the elect, right, the 144,000, according to these guys, they received their salvation before the tribulation, but yet in the scriptures, as I just said. Before the great tribulation. We're in tribulation now. It speaks about the elect not receiving the mark of the beast. How much more tribulation can the world withstand? I mean, like, there's like 50, 60 million people unemployed in America. No one has any idea, like, if they can make their next house payment. The food shortages are everywhere starting, you know, and stuff. So it's like, how much more tribulation do these people want? You know, and the police are after us and all this kind of stuff. Government's trying to vaccinate us. I mean, what do these people want to see? Like, these people are disgusting people. These quote-unquote Bible scholars are absolutely stupid. All they're doing is they're baiting people into that time period because they're not part of the elect, I guess. Because, like, they're too stupid to, like, read basic verses of the Bible. And so... Um, how much more tribulation can the world stand? And then the Bible says exactly how much it can withstand. It's the plagues in Revelation 16, and then that's it. That's all, that's the biggest stress test God's going to do. That's all he has left, you know, and it's in sequence and it's for a specific purpose. And then it all builds up to the battle in the Middle East. And so Armageddon, and so that's it, you know. And so God's aware of the fact, hopefully it's obvious, like at least people who are smart, not this idiot, that the world is stressed out right now. And so there's a group that, are taken away and then it's going to get stressed a bit more and then but only to take the mixed multitude out and then god doesn't care about anybody else on earth if they are there with the mark of the beast he's just is a speedy riddance what the bible says he's just getting rid of everybody so how could they not receive the mark of the beast if they received their salvation before the mark of the beast was even um released worldwide that don't make any sense. No, you don't make any sense. You got to read your Bible, man. You, this guy has too much Tohar GMO um, in his brain. 
doesn't even bother to read the whole verse. Revelation 20, verse 4. How are they beheaded when they're God's elect, dummy? And so it's just, these people are stupid. This is, the Bible has to be true, and these idiots have to be set up because it's so bad at this point. That's falsehood there. The third one, third uh, way to refute it is... Um, so he's 0 for 2. Okay, let's see the third one. In the scriptures, there's only two comings of Christ. So according to the doctrine of... Uh, no, he doesn't he only he's this is like he just made that up you know it's like no he doesn't know the bible and so that the third one that he's missing the second one is when christ appears to bring his two witnesses again he thinks that he's one of the two witnesses and hopefully i've disproven that just by his butchering of these few scriptures it's just, and then i mean forget about the you know the non virgin birth and like not him but other ball earthers and just the list goes on and so um the fact that he actually doesn't care about the law or his people or anything like that his people and so um this dummy doesn't understand that the two witnesses have to be brought here. And so Acts 1.11, we're told, is going to happen again. Exactly the same. Christ in the sky, at that time he was taken away, this time he's returning. His elect will be on the earth and then there'll be two men there. That, those things are going to happen again. And those are three distinct entities. Yahawashai, the elect, and the two witnesses. And so that is what he doesn't know because, and he's not told because he's stupid, but, um, and he's obviously not a part of, and so, because he thinks he's the two witnesses. And if you read every, anything and everything about the two witnesses, it's pure entities, you know? And then they're going to have power over the whole earth. God's going to put this person with power over the whole earth? Really? Are you kidding me? You know, the stupid jokes and all these idiots, these baboons. I wouldn't even put this person in charge of, like, an empty parking lot. <laughs> and so much less, like, the clouds and the sun and, you know, the water and all that kind of... Are you kidding me? And so, no. You, no random person, entities are going to do that. And so this is why, again, we have to be in the end times because the people teaching the Bible are so stupid, like flat out dumb. And so he doesn't understand that that's what, it, what Ezra is talking about when it said the highest is going to visit the world that he's made. That's a visit. A visit means you don't stay. You're visiting in the first time. And so the visitation is to take the elect away and to bring the two witnesses here. That's the church in Philadelphia. They're taken away. You know, Revelation 18, 4, Revelation 3, 1 Thessalonians. All of the verses that say that God's elect are not appointed unto wrath. And so, but wrath is going to come. And so they're taken away. So he doesn't know that because he's not a part of it. Let's just, it's just what it is. He keeps pushing this. He's just stupid. I mean, this is like, it's not difficult. It's not rocket science um, here. So um, that's Christ's second coming. And then he's going to, all the verses that talk about Christ appearing with his elect, now the elect are with Christ. And so then they return and then there's a speedy riddance of all those who have the mark of the beast. That's the sequence. And so if the Bible's true, that's what's going to happen. And so we have to wait and see. Of this pre-plague rapture, that must imply that um, the Lord must return three times. As in, you know. Correct. I mean, he's, his first appearance here on earth where he was crucified, he's returning. He's visiting the world that he's made. The highest is going to visit the world that he's made through his son and his two witnesses and his angels. And then he returns with his elect. And so all the verses that talk about Christ returning with his elect, these dummies have to just make up something. You're like, I don't know. <laughs> that was the dead in Christ. Or they'll just, they'll have to make up stuff. And so um, let me get that verse. So, um, <clears throat> um, this, uh, I didn't actually have this one ready, but, um, I, I'll, I'll look at that. I'll have to find that one. But there, there are verses that talk about Christ returning with his elect. And so um, I can't remember what book it, it, it's in. It might actually be in 1 Thessalonians. Um, I'll just um, try and find that. And so, um, you know, they're not able to... I've, I've asked end times teacher before about this. And... Um, 
pretty much all he can say is that it's the dead in Christ that have risen or something like that. Um, okay, I may need to actually look for that, but um, I'll post it below um, after this video is done. But, um, you know, just know that. And so he's not able to explain the verses that talk about Christ returning with his elect. How is that possible if the elect are here on this earth? according to Acts 111 and experiencing that um, you know Christ in the sky again and so so the elector on earth and then you know Christ appears in the sky and then but he returns with his elect as well how's that possible and so just know that these people are just there it's a joke I mean it's so simple for those people who have understanding it's very very obvious what the sequence is and so um, no that's not Christ returning with the dead in Christ and all that kind of stuff either God's elector on this earth right now or they're not that's just what it is. And so, um, again, in Acts 1.11, we're told that those closest to Christ are going to see the reciprocal event, and so they have to be on the earth again. And so, um, just know that. And so, um, you know, that is only possible if God takes them away and then returns later, 1260 days. You know, one time, 2,000 years ago, a second time in this secret rapture, or a pre-plague pre uh, rapture, or pre-tribulation rapture, whatever one you subscribe to. Um, and then one more time after the tribulation, but that's not in the scriptures. That's not in the scriptures. Where does it say that? All right. So um, that's just three little examples that I wanted to give to refute the teaching that Christ will return before the, uh, the, the great tribulation and before the uh, the mark of the beast, okay, the elect are going to go through the tribulation and go through the time of the mark of the beast, okay, according to the scriptures. Uh, but anyway, if anybody watches this video and leaves in a pre-tribulation rapture, I challenge you down below to uh, support your claims. Uh, but anyway, with that being said, I'm going to say shalom. All right, so I found the verse. It was actually in First Thessalonians three thirteen. So that ye, so that he may establish your hearts blameless and holiness before our God and Father at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. And there's many verses that you can find that talk about the saints being God's elect. And so, and again, 3.13, 3, 3, 3. It's in the t these times, the times that we live in now. These numbers are not by coincidence. And so again, 1 Thessalonians, I'm reading an ESV, at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints, all of them. And so what's, what, what, how does he dance around that? So these people are finished. You know, it's just they're, they're actors. It's, it's done. You know, I don't know how many times I have to do this again. It's just to kill time. But um, all his saints. So they would have to read that and be like some of his saints, I guess, or like a few of his saints or whatever. And so it's the same with Joseph and Mary did not lay together before, uh, you know, Christ was until, until after was Christ was born. And so um, they're just like, no, he did. And that's what they're, that's all they'll have to say. Like, no, that's not true. Actually, he did, they, they did lay together when the Bible explicitly says that they did not lay together until after Christ was born. And so they'll do the same thing here. And it's the same thing we see again with ball earthers who like, you know, massage all the flat earth verses and all that, like whatever who cares, you know, it's not literal God. They're not scientists and all that. God just has a bunch of dumb people writing stuff down for him and all that kind of stuff. Really? Are you kidding me? And so um, that's not the case. And so, um, you know, just know that. So everything that I teach is what the Bible says. There's, I didn't make up anything. I didn't, you know, fill in a little holes or gaps or whatever. If the Bible's true, that's what's going to happen. We don't know when, because only the Most High knows. And so that's the only thing I don't know. You know, and again, one involvement we have individual. Individually, that's up for, uh, that's God have, has already decided. And so um, the only way this verse is possible and all the other verses that I read is if Christ returns and takes his elect away. And so... Um, and that makes sense because that's their reward for being the elect and God's just chosen. It's like, we don't have a choice who they are. It's they, he's chosen them. And so um, just know that. Do I think that I am? I don't know, but I ask every day to be taken because I know that I'm in hell. So what else am I going to do? Be like, God, hey, give me a five-year plan to stay in hell longer. Give me some Doritos. Um, eat Doritos with End Times teacher and all these other dummies. No, I don't want to be around these people. These people are stupid. The dumbest people and the most evil people are the people who are reading the Bible. And so... Um, they're stupid, you know, him, Tahar, Obadiah's judgment, um, Ken Hoban, Pastor Anderson, all those people. And then we have the government who are just on their own thing, which we all know. So like what's left. <laughs> and so like, um, 
it's, it's we're, we're surrounded, you know? And so um, just know that, that um, these verses are all this stuff in the Bible. And I say this respectfully is, is true and it's, it's life. And so, no, it's not just little fix this here and all this kind of stuff. No, God presented the word, his word perfectly to us. And if you have discernment with God helping you and you care about people, these things will make sense. This person is an animal. Um, he's a Satanist. It's very, very obvious. And he very clearly does not know the scriptures. And um, that means he's an actor and, um, you know, and uh, um, he's Antichrist. Hope everyone's doing well. Bye.